eight seeds historically versus one seeds win like 13% of the time in the NBA. So in other words, we're 87% if we look at it objectively to lose. That's true. But even the Toronto Raptors will tell you that the Wizards aren't your average eight seed team. Right. I think you look at uh, the fact that they're playing well. They have the potential to play a lot better with John Wall. It's just a matter of getting the time, timing and chemistry issues kind of out of the way. Plus, uh, you look at the playoff situation, and, and, yeah, I was one of those guys that referenced the Wizards knocking the Toronto Raptors out a couple of years ago. But as we've seen, this is a much improved Toronto Raptors team with a really deep bench that uh, Dwayne Casey is really relying on to sort of get this team through when the stars don't necessarily play as well as their numbers uh, may indicate. You look at the fact that it's 27 points scored between DeMar DeRozan and Cal Lowry, and yet the Raptors still found a way to win that game. Now, they set a playoff record for made threes uh, going 16 for 30, but at the end of the day, uh, the Wizards have a tall order in trying to win a game in Toronto, especially when you look at the fact that they've got one, one of the more productive benches in the league. I mean, 45 points, 42 from uh, doubles the Wizards' output from the from the bench. And if that's going to be the theme of the playoffs, where they're literally getting double the output off their bench versus what the Wizards are getting, then that is probably going to make the difference over the course of the series. See, Tony, my thought, and maybe it was simplistic, is that this, this Wizards team, even though the record wasn't as good as last year, when John's healthy, when everybody's healthy, is a better team than last year because the Wizards bench is better with Mike Scott, Oubre, Sadoransky now moving to the bench. Now they got nothing out of Oubre and Sato in the first game. What are your expectations for the rest of the series? Well, that has to change. Um, and, and, you know, there are a couple of things that have to change in this game in order for the Wizards to really have a chance. First of all, they've got to defend the perimeter a lot better than they did in game one. I mean, 50 50- percent from the three-point line is, is just that's way too high i mean you just don't don't really see that 53 percent um it's, it's just too high and then you look at uh the fact that again we go back to the bench production that's something that toronto has relied on all year and there were question marks as to how deep casey would go with his bench being that it's playoffs because most teams shorten the rotation well you look at the fact that like i said they get 40 two points off the bench, and that's without Fred Van Fleet, um, who's a guy that averages double figures for him and, and one of the best bench players who's going to be coming back. So that has to be addressed. And the other thing, you're right, you got to get more out of Oubre. Um, I think Mike Scott had a pretty good game, but you've also got to get more out of Otto Porter. I didn't think that Otto was very aggressive uh, in that first game, and that's something that the Wizards are going to have to have, because in that last series where they took the Wizards out a couple of years ago, Otto Porter played a significant role in that. Yeah, I mean, I think he played 32 minutes and, and only took seven shots. You can't do that in yeah. today's NBA. Yeah, yeah. Not seven if you're a max shots player. not going to cut it at yeah. all. He was not aggressive enough offensively. Right. You know, the people talk about Otto's aggressiveness. To me, Otto, he's a glue player and he just kind of fits in. It's not like he has the ball in his hand. And, and, and you know, John had a big game, but he's a ball-dominant guy. There were 29 team assists, but they're all coming from, you know, 15 from, from John. The ball movement is less, and particularly down the stretch when John's in the lineup. Well, that was evident by the fact that uh, the team had 29 assists uh, early in the fourth quarter. And guess what? They ended the game with 29 assists. And, and, and that speaks to what you were talking about going down the stretch in that fourth quarter. The ball did not move as well as it needs to move in order for the Wizards to get good looks at the basket. So they've got to address uh, their play going down the stretch, and and that's been an issue for a while. Even with John out, that was clearly an issue, and you would hope that it would get better because, again, you're talking about your all-star point guard, the guy who kind of sets the table for everybody else, and, yeah, the guy that can also make plays and create for others uh, and also put the ball in the basket himself. He didn't have a good shooting night. Um, and maybe he needs to, I'm not going to say shoot less, but he's got to take better shots. And I thought that um, his looks uh, in game one were not that great, and that's part of the reason why he didn't have a good field goal percentage. 
talking to Tony Massenberg from NBC Sports Washington. Of course, played for 12 NBA teams during his career, including the five. So I have another kind of simple why I picked the Wizards. I generally believe that in the playoffs, it comes down to the stars. And whichever team yep. has the better star or more stars wins. And I believe that John Wall is the best player on the court, even against guys like Lowry and DeRozan. What's kind of your theory? You were part of many playoff teams as to which teams tend to advance. Well, a lot of times the game does. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. The game does uh, come down to the star players, and even more so when those star players happen to be your backcourt. Um, guard play is essential um, in the playoffs because possessions are really important. Uh, turnovers are something that you cannot afford. Uh, for the most part, the less of them you have, the better chances you have at winning the game. And that comes down to the play of your backcourt. 